Now there are three major differences to know between CFI or centralized finance and DeFi or decentralized finance. First, in crypto banking services, centralized finance, you know, like Coinbase, Binance, Huobi, the big boys you've all traded your crypto on, these are owned by a single entity or often a corporation. CFI teams often provide valuable services, but at the end of the day, they're 100% in charge. They can let you in and they can kick you out. But in DeFi, applications aim to decentralize that ownership and become community owned, kind of like a grocery co-op. Everyone owns a piece of it, and its code is run and maintained by the community. Now, secondly, in centralized finance, you often have to go through a sign-up and submit to KYC, or Know Your Customer, regulations. And this is often to abide by regulations and prevent criminal behavior like money laundering. But at the end of the day, this is cumbersome and gets in the way. It provides friction. In DeFi, as long as you have a crypto wallet like Metamask, you don't have to submit to KYC or sign up to anything or ask anyone for permission. Just click connect and you're in. And that's what we mean by DeFi being permissionless. No permission required. In centralized finance, we trust exchanges and other centralized apps with our assets. In fact, we don't really have a choice. If I deposit into Coinbase, I am trusting them to keep the balance of my crypto assets safe while I trade. But in DeFi, I never have to trust anyone. I just custody my own assets. And even if I trade them, it's a peer-to-peer -peer swap where no one else ever takes control of my assets. So I depend on the smart contracts to execute transactions and trades, not people. So the takeaway here is that CFI and DeFi provide similar services, but centralized finance, CFI, is better for those of us who prefer to play by highly regulated rules and fill out the paperwork to get in the club that custodies our crypto assets for us, and in doing so gives us permission to participate in their crypto services, but of course also has a helpline, versus in DeFi where we're 100% in control of our assets, trusting the code, which requires no permission, but there's nobody for us to call when something goes wrong. So yes, there's good and bad to consider on both sides, but we'll dig into that more in future DeFi 101 episodes. But for now, at least you know. So you've been watching DeFi 101, do be sure and check out the other videos in this series and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the new videos as they drop. And above all, stay safe out there.